Coming up on this week's Wharf and Chips, we've travelled north of the border to Scotland to Abbey Tool and Gage. We're going to find out more about this company who are 50 years young. Also in this week's show, we're going to find out why coolant is such an important part of the manufacturing process. Welcome to Swarf and Chips. Alistair, thank you very much for the invitation to your wonderful company today. Can you tell us a little bit about Abbey Tool and Gage, please? Hi, hi there, Joe. Yeah, um, Abbey Tool and Gage was established in 1970 by my father, uh, Graham Reed. Uh, so we've obviously been here 50 years plus now. Uh, predominantly, we are a component manufacturer for various industries, oil and gas, nuclear, hydraulic, automotive, etc. Um, we sort of specialise in or one, one hit machining. So we're looking to manufacture parts complete in one setting. This is the, the sort of one of the US unique selling points of the business. Mm -hmm. And what technology do you have here? I can see different brands. In fact, you've got lots of different machines. Yeah, um, predominantly we're a Doosan shop. We deal, deal with, I've dealt with Mills CNC since 1978. Uh, so about 80% uh, Doosan machinery. Uh, we use DMG Mori uh, and Nakamura's. And, and in terms of your component mix, you know, what industries do you serve? Um, oil and gas is one, nuclear, uh, automotive is a, is a growing part of our business, um, hydraulic is uh, quite a large part of it as well and recently we've just applied for AS9100 uh, aerospace accreditation, we'll just mm -hmm. hope to hear about that in the next few weeks. Yeah. And obviously you're talking about Dunning 1, so cycle times the essence, so you, you're heavy on uh, machine, machine efficiencies and things like this, getting yeah. parts off quicker. Yeah, we, we, we sort of operate a continuous improvement policy, uh, so we're always looking at ways of improving you know, how we manufacture and the way we do and rather than just looking at the machine or the tooling we now look at a whole wrap round sort of version of things so for example we look at um, insert usage, uh, cutting fluids, um, work holding, all these sort of things. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned cutting fluids, you know that's something I want to focus on really why is it so important? It's almost like I've got coolant, I can leave it, I can forget about it. Why is it so important to your businesses and every business to actually monitor your, your coolant and you know, you know, embrace the right type of technology? Yeah, so, so coolant is a big part of the manufacturing process. If we, if we don't have coolant in what we do, we don't manufacture components. So we're looking for what we consider to be best in class or, or very good sort of coolants. Um, the product we're using at the moment uh, the dilution rate is a lot lower than what we would normally use or what we've been using previously. Mm -hmm. And that's helped, it's more cost effective. And we found it's a very, very clean product. And the, the service that we're getting from Rock Hall has been exceptional. Uh, the backup from Ian, Ian and his team has been first class. Yeah, and there's obviously some of the soft benefits as well. It's clearly environmental impact, things like that. But you talk about aerospace accreditation. These things are starting to be monitored yeah. now, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, it's a thing we take very seriously at Abbey to engage the environment. Our carbon footprint is important. We're constantly analysing where the waste is. Um, and what we found with the Rockall product is, because we're using a smaller dilution, uh, the things we've put in place to monitor tram oil, um, where it, it creates a much more pleasant environment for our staff to work in. Um, less misting, cleaner machines, cleaner areas all around, all very good. And you've got some machines with very high pressure coolant. So do you have any foaming issues, anything like that? Um, yeah, we, so the high pressure coolant has been a success. We uh, recently put in a couple of DMG Morris, both have that on it. Um, but we've not had any issues with foaming or heavy duty issues with foaming or anything with the Rock Hall product. So you mentioned DMG Mori, you've got two NHX 4000s. What was the reason behind the purchase? Um, we had to invest with some aged 5 axis machine tools and we had to invest to replace them. So we, we scrapped them off. And we went to DMG Murray and said, look, this is what we're removing. We don't, we're not so keen on going down five axis. We would like to look at horizontal. So this was the offering that they came up with. It's been a, a massive success. Um, the increase in productivity has been very, very good. The, the rapid movement on each, all the axes is very, very quick. Tool changer is quick. Um, and it's put some things in like tool breakage detection, which has been a big thing for us. It's allowed us to do some lights out, unmanned machining which again is assisted with productivity. 
Yeah, and being horizontal, obviously you've got multiple sides of the pallet and it's going to be two ops regardless, isn't it? So you may as well do this instead of five axis. Yeah, yeah, that, that was the thing that we, we, we sort of looked at with the five axis, it's where it was letting us down. So 99% of what was going on here is two operations. Um, one of the things we've been concentrating very hard over the last six months is how we work hold on these machines and we have started to use zero point clamping which allows us to change, typically change a fixture no more than 20 minutes. So we stop one part, one single click, offload, drop on, click again and away we go. It's been a, and it, it, it sort of de-skilled it in a, to a sense where the, the oper operative himself can actually take it to that level before someone more senior will run the part through. So you've mentioned efficiency and how it's important to be efficient. The Nakamura WT300, it's the first one I've seen with this configuration. Yeah, it was one of the first ones in the UK, Joe. Um, we sort of looked at how do we become more efficient. We had four Nakamuras prior to that. And we looked at it, opening and closing doors, no one wants to pay for that. With this machine we can run lights out unaided until we have to tip change or something like that. And obviously you purchased it some time ago. You know, how, how's that been? Is it a good machine? You're happy with yeah, it? Yeah, very, very reliable machines. The, the backup from the engineering technology is in first class. We don't have to get them in very often, but when they do, they're here, you know, on, the, on time every time. And what's the main reason for buying an Akinura? Would it be speed, the programming, the uh, accuracy? Yeah, very, very accurate machine. Quick, uh, very quick indexing. Um, great, some great attributes there that, again, pushes us towards this productivity uplift. So Ian, what's the importance of a subcontract engineer looking at, you know, looking at their coolant? Well, it's everything from cost to waste to being environmentally friendly, being mm -hmm. operator friendly. You've got to take everything into account. Yeah, so what, what are the pitfalls? When, you, when you're doing your travels, what do you see a lot of that can be improved? Much like people use the wrong insert for the wrong job, people use the wrong coolant for the wrong job. Simple as that. You've got to get the right coolant for the right customer for the right job. Mm -hmm. And how do you go about selecting the right coolant? Well, you look at the materials, what customers are, are machining. Uh, you look at the feeds and speeds. You look at the types of machine. Um, you look at what they're looking to reduce. It might be their carbon footprint. So potentially reducing the waste, their overall mm -hmm. usage. So essentially, Joe, you're looking at everything. And today we're at Abbey Tall Engage in Scotland. They do everything from ink canal, super hard duplex, all the way to some quite easy materials. And they use the same coolant. Is that typical or should people use different coolant for different materials? Most people like to use one cutting fluid. Uh, you have to look at the, the balance of material. So to exaggerate the point, if somebody had 2% of ink canal, then you wouldn't spec a very high performing cutting fluid. So you, you look at the percentages of the materials they're cutting and then you look to see what fits their needs best. Mm -hmm. And just a final point for me, the environmental impact of uh, metalwork and fluids. When we talk about the percentages and things like that, you know, just talk us through that, the difference between, you know, cost per barrel and cost in sump and also the environment, uh, environmental impact. It doesn't, high percentage doesn't mean you're using more coolant. No, no. People, people get confused, not so much confused, but people are probably ill-informed about cutting fluids. So what you want to be doing is you want to be reducing your overall usage, so how much oil you're actually buying in. So you want a good quality product that's going to dilute at very high ratios. Today in here we're diluting about, topping up about 60 to 1. So I always say to people, and you and I have discussed this again before, don't talk in refractometers talk in actual dilution or at least know your actual dilution once you know that you'll know your true usage and your true, your true spend so there we have it the end of another swarf and chip show i'd just like to thank abby tall engage for their hospitality and i hope you've learned more about coolant and how it can improve your machine shop we'll see you next week and keep those spindles turning